السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who were sent before him as well. May the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of their companions as well as the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us. May he bless humanity at large. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, we all love Jesus. May peace be upon him. The Arabic term used to refer to him is Isa. And we say alayhi salam, which means may peace be upon him. So when you hear the term Isa alayhi salam, it actually means in the English language, Jesus, may peace be upon him. The reason why today I will use the term Jesus, may peace be upon him, is because those who do not know the Arabic language or the non-Muslims who may hear or who may be here or who may listen to this later on, uh, would perhaps understand it better if we were to say Jesus may peace be upon him What is it about Jesus may peace be upon him to start with he was one of the five top messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala One of the greatest of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who were these five Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of them in a verse and We can understand from that that their level was the highest Allah says the messengers we have indeed favored some above the others we have raised in rank some above the others not all of them are on the same level in terms of rank and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the highest and most noble of all messengers is indeed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the highest of all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah says in the Quran وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَمِنْكَ وَمِنْ نُوحٍ وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى بْنِ مَرْيَمَ وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَلِيظًا Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he took it from you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's one. And from Noah, Noah is the second, or should I say, Noah is one of the five as well, in terms of the highest in ranking of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, he is one of the five. Noah or Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, may peace be upon him. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him. Some rank him as the second. He is the father of all those who came after him. If you look at the order in this particular verse, you will find it very interesting. Allah makes mention of the Prophet Noah before the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. According to the timeline of history, Nuh alayhi salam came before Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Then Allah says, and Moses and Jesus, may peace be upon them. So these are the five. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet Noah, may peace be upon him, the Prophet Ibrahim, may peace be upon him, the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, and the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him. You cannot be a Muslim unless you believe in Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. You cannot be a Muslim unless you believe that Isa alayhi salam or Jesus may peace be upon him is alive and returning to the earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So what happened? If we take a look at his life, we will find that his birth was a miracle. This miracle was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah creates man in four ways. He chose to create Adam, may peace be upon him, without the involvement of a male or a female from dust and from soil. We spoke about it yesterday. And at the same time, he, it is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came into play. When we say the word of Allah, we are not referring to the same thing the Christians are speaking about. We are referring to the word of Allah. The word is kaf and noon. Kun, it means be. That is the word. 
When Allah says that word, anything He wants to be, becomes. So Allah says, be, that is the word, and it is. I'm sure you've all, all heard the term kun fayakun, which means be, and it is. Allah says it in the Quran. So when Allah says it is the word of Allah, He is referring to the, the, the term be, or the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed that Adam alayhi salam be, and he was. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إن مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون. Amazing verse. Allah says the example of Jesus is similar to the example of Adam. May peace be upon them both. Allah says, as for Adam, he was created from dust and soil. And Allah said, be, and he was. Similarly with Jesus, may peace be upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word was be, and he was. Subhanallah. So that is the similarity. It was unique. Allah created Adam without the involvement of a male or female. Allah created Eve through a male without the involvement of a female. Also the word of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Jesus, may peace be upon him without the involvement of a male also by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his instruction and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates you and me through male and female also his word his instruction he blows in the soul by his instruction and at the same time Jesus may peace be upon him is referred to as the one whom is has the ruh or his ruh his soul was blown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when the term Ruhullah is used, it refers to the soul from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was blown in. And some might say, well, Ruhullah means the soul of Allah. Well, Allah uses that term when he refers to certain great items. For example, Baytullah. You say the house of Allah. What you mean is a masjid, a place where Allah is worshipped. You, for example, we would say Ardullah, the earth of Allah. It belongs to Allah. So the ruh belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The highest in terms of rank is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One might argue that why is it in the Quran, Jesus may peace be upon him is mentioned more than 20 times. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is only mentioned a few times. Remember, that does not show any degradation for a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only because of the requirement of the clarification regarding the Prophet Jesus that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with that clarification so many times. So it is not to say that Jesus may peace be upon him was higher than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself who came with the Quran. That alone is the rank and it shows that when a person blows their own trumpet, it reduces their value. If you and I were to say how great I am, it reduces your value. But if people are to bear witness how good you are, that is your true worth. Subhanallah. If people bear witness how good you are, that's your true worth. But if you blow your own trumpet, perhaps it could actually be a, a means of people pointing at you, claiming that you are arrogant or you are self-conceited. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's name not being mentioned as many times as the, the name of Jesus peace be upon him does not reduce the rank of either of them. In fact, it only confirms that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. It confirms that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, the fact that the surahs or the chapters that are named in the Quran, you will not find the name of a woman in the Quran Besides that of the Prophet, oh, the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, his mother, Mary. She was innocent. She was a virgin. She delivered without the involvement of a male by the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take a look at that, you will come to realize the importance given to this woman is such that even the Bible does not name a chapter after her. Subhanallah. This is why we revere these prophets such that if cartoons were to be drawn, not regarding Muhammad sallallahu alone, but regarding any one of those prophets, we would be hurt, we would be insulted, it would be considered blasphemous, and it would be considered wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. So, 
These are the messengers of Allah. We love Jesus. May peace be upon him. That is what makes us Muslim. Do not be confused. Don't think for a moment that in Islam we don't believe in Jesus. May peace be upon him. We also believe that his mother never married. She was actually never involved with a male. May peace be upon her. She was chaste. She was pure. She was clean. She found herself one day expecting. One might say, how? Well, let me explain to you. At that time, medicine was at its peak, where those who were experts of medicine used to boast and brag about how they could do things and how they could cure people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine wisdom is such that every messenger who was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was actually sent with miracles connected to that particular time. At the time of the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, engineering was at its peak. So here you look at the way he struck the ocean or the sea and it made these highways this path this was a miracle this was engineering at its peak even greater than the pyramids that were there you follow what i'm saying there were pyramids it was an epitome it was in fact a, a powerful example of engineering and here you have a messenger coming with his little stick and he touches or hits strikes at the water and suddenly there are 12 highways subhanallah 12 highways ready for the people to cross onto the other side. Technology, should I say, engineering at its peak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, grant us an understanding. So Isa alayhi salam, let's take a look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was sent, linguists were boasting with one another because as much as they were unlettered, the Quraysh, the bulk of them, they were very eloquent. They were highly educated. Remember, when you say unlettered, you are not referring to illiterate. You are referring to one who did not read or write. And at the same time, they were highly educated. But at the same time, you find when Muhammad ﷺ spoke, they were silenced. Complete silence. They had nothing to match what he said. They were asked to come with a single verse, a single word, similar to that of the Quran. They couldn't. Not one verse. So... Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him, when he came, he was given the power to cure the sick, as the Quran says. So many times he put his hand on the leper and the leper was cured after medicine had failed. How did this happen? He makes it very clear. It happened by the will of Allah, the permission of Allah, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never ever claimed this was my power. It was power given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to get up from your seat today or you are to breathe, you cannot claim that I am the one by my power, I am breathing. You need to say Allah has given me the power. Ultimately, it's the power of Allah. If he wants, he can stop it right here, right now. So Jesus may peace be upon him, an amazing example where he put his hand on the head of a blind person and they opened their eyes. Similarly, he put or he created, he made a clay image of a bird. So he had like a sculptured sort of a bird. And he blew in it and it began to fly. This was miracle given to Jesus, may peace be upon him. When medicine failed and declared someone dead, if they called in Jesus, peace be upon him, he would put the hand on that person and the person would come alive by the will of Allah. Allah says, and remember when you gave life to the dead by my permission. So it was Allah giving the life. But through Isa alayhi salatu was salam, as a miracle given to this powerful, great messenger, Jesus may peace be upon him. So what we learn from this indeed, is that when it comes to the birth of Jesus himself, it was the most miraculous thing. If he could give life to the dead by the will of Allah, then he came to life by the will of Allah. Medicine was at its peak. Something that the doctors could not understand was how he gave birth or how he was born. And at the same time, how he brought to life by the will of Allah, by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who were dead. This is a miracle mentioned in the Quran in more than one place. It's amazing. So this is a great ranking messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is something unique and it is something worth taking note of. So as he was born, there was another miracle that happened. People began to accuse the, the mother of Jesus, may peace be upon him. You need to know 
Every time someone has been blessed with virtue from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be people who will be for them and there will be others who become jealous of them. They are against them. They begin to fabricate things. They begin to lie in order to try to drop the status of that particular person. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to their rescue. You need to know this. If people come to you or if people have lied about you, trying to drop you and so on, trying to harm you in terms of your reputation, something you are not guilty of. Remember, it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It happened to those who are better than you. It has to happen to you. It is a sign of acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the scholars have taught us saying that if you'd like to know whether you are successful or not, what you need to do is look into how many people lie about you. When they have to lie about you in order to drop you, then you need to know it's a sign that they are acknowledging the effect and the impact that you have had and your status, the status granted to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't let that confuse you. Don't let that deceive you. Don't let that sadden you. Take a look when he was... When he came to life, when he was born by a miracle, what happened is as his mother was being accused, she was instructed to point at the child. When when she pointed at the child, he spoke miraculously from the cradle, Isa alayhi salatu was salam. This is a miracle that is not mentioned in the Bible. It is a miracle mentioned in the Quran. What is this miracle? It is something the Muslimin have made clear that even the Christians don't have. That Jesus, may peace be upon him, spoke from the cradle. He spoke from the cradle. Allah makes mention of it in Surah Maryam. قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا He said, I am indeed the worshipper of Allah. I am the slave of Allah. This was the first introduction made by Jesus, may peace be upon him. And he introduced himself to everyone as a little baby in a cradle. And he says, I am the slave of Allah. Inni Abdullah. So this had to clarify, he's not the son of Allah. He is not part of the family of Allah. When the term Ruhullah is used, it does not mean that he is a part of Allah. Because as I explained, the same applies to Baytullah. The same would apply to Ardullah, which means it is belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or its status is so high that Allah connects it to himself. So he says, I am the worshipper of Allah, Abdullah. I am the worshipper or the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is about to give me the book. Allah has given me in terms of what he is about to get, the book, the Injil. And, and he says, he continues thereafter to say, he has made me a Nabi, a prophet. This was clarification from Jesus, may peace be upon him. He clears it himself. And Allah repeats that statement in the Quran for you and I to know and for all those who say he was the son of God to know that indeed he was born without the involvement of a male but that does not make him the son of God. Similarly, Adam, may peace be upon him, was created as we mentioned in the verse that I recited earlier. He was created without the involvement of a male or a female. If this one was the son of God, then that one is more deserving of being the son of God. If not, the first of the sons. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from blasphemy. Amen. So this is why it is a beautiful clarification in the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of how he miraculously spoke when he was a little child. I want to draw an example for every one of us. A lesson in our lives. In the Quran, you will find on two occasions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs people to be silent and to do something. In the, in the case of Maryam, may peace be upon her, she was instructed to be silent, not to say anything. Although there were accusations leveled against her, she was told to just point. That's it. I can point. This problem is too big for me to solve. Allah will solve it for you. You just point at the child and that's it. And we will do the rest. When she did that, you heard what happened, the child spoke. But at the same time, what you need to know, subhanallah, is that the similar thing happened to the Prophet Zakaria, may peace be upon him. When he found that his wife was expecting at an old age, he was shy. He felt perhaps people might have a fat lot to say. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, remain silent. Keep quiet. Three days, don't say anything besides by signs. Don't say a word. Why? This problem is so big. It's so large. It is up to us to sort it out for you. You are working for us. You know, in our term, we would say perhaps, you know, this man is my boss. I'm working for him. In the case of the prophets and those who do the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. Sometimes they need to remain silent in order for... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clear for them something that is very big. It's so big that they may not be able to do it themselves. Here is the example. Jesus may peace be upon him, his mother. Similarly, Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam. Allah says, Ayatunka Allah to kaliman nasatala talayalin sawiya. The sign we are going to give you, the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't speak to people for three days. And in another verse, or in this verse, three nights. Three days, three nights. Don't speak to them. Leave them. Things will happen. They will clarify. They will clear. Don't make matters worse. Subhanallah, what a beautiful example. In our lives, whatever you can do, you should do. But remember, the rest of it, leave it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what? You have to have a few people who don't like you. You have to have a few, a few people who accuse you of something that you're not guilty of. Look at what happened to Isa alayhi salam. Look at what happened to his mother. May peace be upon her. The purest of the pure of the time. And she was a virgin. Mary, may peace be upon her. Allah honored her in such a beautiful way that some centuries later, an entire chapter of the Quran was named after her. Allah knew this. But it came to us through Nabi Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. We recite it, we repeat it. In fact, her name is the, the female name in the Quran that is made mention of what an honor. As we said, that does not reduce the value of the Sahabiyat or the female companions of Muhammad sallallahu nor does it reduce the value of any other of those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is simply a clarification and a divine decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do that. The same applies to the number of times Jesus may peace be upon him is mentioned in the Quran. As I said, it does not increase or decrease his value. It is for divine reasons to clarify because Allah knows that there are people and there will be people who will continue saying that he was the son of God and he is so on on one hand and on the other hand there will be people who, who say and who will continue to say that he was the child of adultery. Na'udhu billah. May Allah protect us from such statements. And here we are in the middle saying he was neither this nor that. He was a slave of Allah, born miraculously through the miracle, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the soul blown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something unique and it is something really great. If we were to take a look at some of the miracles that were given to Jesus, may peace be upon him, we would find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him. Firstly, with the speech that we spoke about. Secondly, Allah gave him the Injil, Allah gave him the book, Allah taught him the Torah, that which was revealed before him as well. He knew it, he knew it very well. And this, at, at the same time, he gave the message of a prophet that was to come after him. He warned the people. وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ اذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah makes mention of how the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, told the children of Yaqub, the children of Jacob, may peace be upon him, also known as the children of Israel, because that was another name to Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, or of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. And Allah says, Remember the favor upon you. That's what Jesus, may peace be upon him, told them. And then he tells them, I am giving you glad tidings or news of a prophet that is to come later on. His name being Ahmed, the comforter, the one who is to come later on, the praised one. And what happened? When he came, when the messenger Muhammad sallallahu came, they denied. The bulk of them denied. They said this is magic and so on, as mentioned in the Quran. So Jesus, may peace be upon him, fulfilled his duty to inform the masses that there is a messenger coming after me. His name is Ahmed, Muhammad, meaning the praised one. It is the same root, the same name. And what happened? They covered it, they changed it, they, they altered it and so on. When he came, yes, some of those with sound knowledge accepted the message, but the bulk of them did not. 
Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something extremely interesting. And that is a question that will be asked to Jesus, may peace be upon him, on the day of judgment or in the hereafter. What is the question? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ When Allah will ask Jesus, peace be upon him, did you instruct the people to worship you and your mother besides Allah? And the answer will come. Allah says, he will say, no way. How could I have instructed them with something that I had no authority over? I had, it is something invalid, something un- incorrect, something I was not instructed. I would never issue an instruction. I was not instructed to dish out basically, to give. I would never. So this is a clarification made in the Quran once again. We also find nowhere in the Bible is it stated that Jesus himself said, worship me alone in an entire verse. We will not find where he called people to abandon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship him or his mother. This is something very interesting. It is something we learn from the Quran and from the story of Jesus may peace be upon him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow upon us His mercy. I want to end with one beautiful story towards or within the life of Jesus, may peace be upon Him, what we find an incident where He had instructed His followers to fast for an entire month. And they fasted for the month according to one of the narrations. And at the end of the month, they had asked Him, they said, look, we want a happy day. We want a day of joy. You know, you and I, subhanAllah, we fast for the month of Ramadan. At the end of that, Allah gives us a day of joy, of happiness. It's known as Eid al-Fitr. The day of happiness connected to the fact that we are, we, are not, we are not fasting anymore. We have actually broken our fast. So in this particular case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asked by Jesus, may peace be upon him, the question, would you send down for us a tablecloth laid with food. Why was the question asked? Allah makes mention of it in the Quran. That these disciples had told Jesus, may peace be upon him. Can you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it possible that your Rabb can send down from the heavens a ma'idah, a laid tablecloth, subhanallah, so that we can... In fact, immediately he told him, hey, fear Allah. You know, people are asking for something ridiculous. Imagine if we were to ask uh, a man who comes to us to remind us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, look, I won't believe in you until uh, 2,000 gold coins of, you know, drop from the ceiling in my home. You look at them and you say, okay, it's fine. I'll make dua for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Or we might want to talk to them in a slightly different way. We would consider it absurd. I don't think people would actually say that today. But at that time, like I told you, these miracles were at the peak, at their peak. So they say, and Allah makes mention of it in the Quran. إِذْ قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ هَلْ يَسْتَطِيعُ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يُنَزِّلَ عَلَيْنَا مَائِدَةً مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ Remember when the disciples said to Jesus, may peace be upon him, is your Rabb able to send down for us a laid tablecloth from the heavens? And immediately he says, قَالَ اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِن كُنْتُمْ He said, fear Allah. If you are truly believers, you don't need that. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to connect your belief to this particular item? They made it clear, no, no, no. We are not connecting our belief to this item. But, we simply want to eat from it. You know, the food from heaven. And we just want our hearts to be at ease. We want our hearts to be at ease and knowing that you have actually been truthful. Subhanallah. And we can be from amongst those who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Isa alayhi salam raises his hands and he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. 
and Allah says, I will send it down to you. But anyone who rejects thereafter, who turns away thereafter, they will taste a very painful punishment. They will taste a very painful punishment. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the signs to you, you need to know that these signs are such that if I were to reject them thereafter, I would be deserving of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Still, by the mercy of Allah, He does not punish us. He gives us time. My brothers and sisters, let's turn to Allah. How many signs have we seen in our lives? We've seen so many signs. How much has Allah bestowed upon us? So much. We have our health, we have our wealth, we have sustenance. We have so much more than most of the people on earth. We have so much, subhanAllah, we are blessed in a million and one ways. Countless ways. Let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us not become from among those who deserves the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said, still through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not inflict us with punishment. He gives us chance upon chance. Please, let's seize one of these chances and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.